In this section, we're going to talk about resource identity, resource naming, and relationships between resources. Resources are identified by their URL, and you should be able to keep the URL stable and immutable over time. That is, I should be able to create a resource at this URL today, and 100 years from now, I should be able to use that same URL to get that resource or to delete that resource. It should be I stay stable and identify that resource over time. So that means that you can't put a ID in a resource or a URL that might change over time. That ID is the key to the resource, and it has to be immutable too. So if you want to give your resources a friendly name of some sort or a mutable name that can change over time, then feel free to do that. Just add another field or property to your resource that is its friendly name or display name, and then you can modify that over time. But the identity of the resource is immutable and does not change over time. And a resource can have fields in it that reference other resources too, and they do that by way of the URL, which is of course their identity as we've already described. And that URL can be an absolute URL or a relative URL. So let's look at an example. In the bottom left of the slide, I have a resource in the author's collection. I have an ID for Jeff Richter at live.com. And then that's the ID of this resource. Then in the request payload or, or in the resource payload, um, it has a display name of Jeffrey Richter. And that is a mutable property. Maybe I wanna put my middle name in there someday, or maybe I wanna make it Jeff instead of Jeffrey, right? I'm allowed to do that, but I can never change the author slash Jeff Richter at live.com moniker. And then I have mail in here. This is my Microsoft email address, but maybe someday I want to go and change that email to something else. That's also mutable. Then I have a publication section in here, and this goes and lists the publications. Um, now, you may recall that in the earlier part of the course, I said that for JSON merge patch, arrays don't work well. So I'm not going to use an array of publications here. Instead, I'm going to use a map of key value pairs for the publications here. So I have here a URL of slash books. So that means on my service, there's a books collection, and then there's this 978 number. That's the ISBN number for one of the books that I wrote. And then I have the title of the book, CLR via C Sharp. And then I have another entry in the publications, which is a different ISBN number for my Windows via C, C++ book. I have a third entry for my Windows Runtime via C Sharp book. And then I've also published videos. So in the videos collection, I have, let's say, an ID for the video, one, two, three, four. And then I give the path to where that video can be found. And this is my resource. So we talked about the identity, we've talked about naming, and then you can see this resource has relationships to other resources like the various books. Then on the right-hand side at the bottom of the slide, I show in the books collection, I've selected one of the books, the ISBN number ending in 457, and then I have information for this. So it has the title of the book, it has maybe the page count, it has the publisher, so that might refer to a publisher's collection and who the publisher is. And then if you happen to start at this book, you can see from the book who are the authors of the book. And you can see that's backtracking, if you will, to the author's collection for Jeff Richter at live.com. So now we have these different resources. They're in different collections on the service, but they have relationships with each other as identified by their URLs.